Vladimir Putin's war in Ukraine has left the country's second largest city, Kharkiv, in ruins. Kharkiv's metro stations, restaurants and bars now function as bomb shelters, including school pubs seen here before the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It's also the bar where our next guest, Christian Miller and Olya Timoshenkova, met two years ago. 12 days before Russia launched its attack on Ukraine, Christian, an American living in Ukraine, received a call strongly recommending that he leave the country. They raced to plan their escape to safety after negative COVID tests. Olya, Christian, and Olya's nine-year-old son, Sasha, got in a taxi and headed straight to the Kharkiv airport. All the flights out of Kharkiv were booked. So they went home and booked a 1 a.m. train to Kyiv. Christian, Olya, and Sasha landed in Tbilisi, Georgia at 7 a.m. on Valentine's Day. That was nine days before Russia invaded Ukraine. Joining me now from Georgia are Christian Miller and Olya Timoshenkova. Thank you both so much for being here. Olya, when you look at those pictures of Kharkiv from what is now your relative safety in Georgia, what goes through your mind? It's terrible. Uh, I've seen these places. It's not just buildings, it's not just pictures of ruined places. They have their history. I know these places. It's my gym ruins, my swimming pool, my okay, Sasha's uh, kitten garden, the places that I visit that I love. It's horrible. All of the places in which we build our lives. Olya, have you heard from your friends and family in Ukraine? Yeah. Um, trying to get in touch with them and uh, to check them out every day. And recently, like, I'm asking them stupid questions, like, how are you? And they're almost all of them answering just with one word, uh, alive. And that's good enough. Yeah, all questions. All questions feel somehow insufficient in this moment. Christian, I, I want to know what was going through your mind when you received that call telling you to flee the country. Um, I was pretty nervous because I tested positive for COVID the week before. Um, so, you know, I was like, am I going to have to rent a car to get out of here? It was Friday night when we got that call. Saturday, we got test. I got, we both got tested in the morning and it came back negative. And then we looked into getting out of the country, which included going to the airport and trying to buy tickets out of Kharkiv, but everything booked up that day because there was a rumor they were gonna shut down the airspace because of insurance underwriting issues. So we went to Kiev and we, you know, took a midnight train out of, out of uh, Kharkiv to Kiev. And then we flew out of Kiev that next evening. I just want our viewers to understand sort of the contours of the decision you are making because Christian, you write on Facebook that quote, the principal of Olya's son's school laughed said to enjoy our vacation when Olya requested his withdrawal from school for two months. Leaving was seen as an overcautious, if not paranoid, move. Christian, I wonder if at any point you questioned your own decision. Um, no, it's better to err on the side of caution. There was a poll done four or five days before the invasion happened, and only about 20% of Ukrainians thought this invasion could happen. Um, so it was a real surprise. Ukrainians, as Olya will tell you, have been living under this threat of a full-scale invasion for eight years, and you just kind of grow used to it, and you can't plan your life around whether it, they will be invaded or not. Olya, you were one of the first to escape to safety. Can you talk us through your experience, what it has been like in Georgia? Georgian people are very, very guestly. They're very supportive. Uh, taxi drivers are not charging me, uh, saying like we are with Ukrainians, no need in money. Our uh, landlord lady Tamriko supports us very much with everything she can, with moral support. She, she provides us some food, asking how are we, what could she do. Everyone goes uh, to the demonstrations. demonstrations, yeah, oh, every yeah. day. And believe it, like, we have the Ukrainian flags covered with it. Oh, yeah, I am a mom. You are a mom. And one of the things that I have wondered as I've watched other moms go through this is how do you explain this to your kid? How do you tell them what is happening and what their future is going to look like? 
you know, for now he's not realizing the damage and what's going on really. And uh, um, I hope is that he, he doesn't for now. Uh, my other because question to you. Kid... Mm -hmm. No, finish your thought. Sure. Uh, because I'm talking to my friends that uh, left in Kharkiv in Ukraine or trying to, uh, to get out from that situation who has kids. And kids are like damaged a lot. Some of them are not talking at all. Some of them uh, talking in sleep, saying like horrified. And I'm happy that Sasha haven't seen this. Oh yeah, is your expectation to go back to Ukraine? I hope it's gonna get better soon and I would have an opportunity to help to build it out back. I love my Ukraine, I love my city, I love people over there. I am proud of them, proud to be Ukrainian.